Pokemon Sword and Shield hit the shelves in late 2019, and as of today, they became the second best-selling Pokemon games of all time, with 88 new Pokemon to discover and the new Dynamax and Gigantamax mechanics. As always, we'll discover the secrets, mysteries, easter eggs and beta content of the 8th generation of Pokemon games. Welcome to the Pokemon Sword and Shield Iceberg. Say my name, Eisenberg. Goddamn right. Tailless Galarian Ponyta. I think this could have been an error, but there was a 24 hour livestream in which Galarian Ponyta was revealed. There are a couple of them, but one doesn't have the fluffy tail all Ponyta do. Giovanni in Galar. If you go to the Ancient Heroes Bath in Surchester, you can see a man contemplating an image of a quadrupedal Pokemon that resembles Sashen or Samazenta. When you talk to him, he asks if the picture is a representation of Persian. If we take a look at his appearance and the fact that he mentions Persian, it kind of reminds us of Giovanni. The fact he's looking away even when talking to you adds to the mystique of this character. Are we talking about the Giovanni that was defeated by Red, or maybe one from a different dimension? On a closer look, I don't think it's Giovanni, as this character model can be seen in different parts of the region, but Game Freak knew what it was doing. Bad Animation the YouTuber Distant Kingdom uploaded a couple of videos showing animations from Sword and Shield as a critique to the games and how the jump from the 3DS to the Nintendo Switch didn't meet many of the fans' expectations. He compares graphics and animations with N64 games and criticizes, among many other things, how many elements such as Pokemon and NPCs pop out of nowhere. Recent Pokemon games are being heavily criticized for glitches, low quality graphics and bad animations. There are people who attack and defend Game Freak for this. Whose side are you on? Dexit This is by far one of the biggest controversies in the Pokemon game's history. Pokemon has always been known for giving the players the chance to choose all Pokemon in existence from generation 1 to 7 until the release of Sword and Shield. Ultra Sun and Moon had 807 Pokemon to choose from, while initially Sword and Shield gave us 400 Pokemon before the DLC. This trend continued with Scarlet and Violet, where many Pokemon are sitting in Pokemon Home, waiting for a new game to be released and be able to use the ones you can't nowadays. What's worrying about this situation is that the developers suggested that due to the nature of the franchise and the constantly expanding variety of creatures, future games won't be able to hold every single Pokemon in existence due to memory constraints. I don't know if this can be fixed with more powerful hardware. Maybe it's a matter of having more time to create and polish the games, but considering the tight schedules they have to release new games, I don't think we'll have every single Pokemon at our disposal for future releases. This topic can definitely be its own video, but I think it's a problem that needs to be addressed seriously, especially with the increasing amount of Pokemon. Ultra Shinies People started noticing that certain shiny Pokemon produced squares instead of the classic stars when sent into battle. This ultra shiny Pokemon have a 1 in around 65,000 chance of appearing, although the odds change for X. It's just my opinion, but I think Game Freak could have made this rare Pokemon a different color from their shiny variations and also fix some of the really bad ones. Chimera Pokemon this refers to the fact that the fossil Pokémon are based off of chimeras in paleontology, meaning the fact that paleontologists mistakenly try to assemble pieces of different fossils, or even went too far by purposefully putting them together to deceive the public into thinking they had found undiscovered species. This is why these fossil Pokémon look out of place. Pokémon Gone more than a rumor, Pokemon Gun was a meme showing an improved third version, similar to Emerald or Platinum. Unless you're watching The Legend of Dratini, it's completely unlikely that a Pokemon game would make use of real guns in their gameplay. 
However, a Mexican newspaper called La Voz de Michoacán published an article about the back then new games, not knowing that Gun wasn't real. The newspapers later apologized for the mistake, but the Pokemon Gun legend might live forever. Imagine if we get Pokemon Legends Gun. Gene Simmons was flattered. Bassist and co-lead singer of KISS, Gene Simmons stated that he was flattered for the homage to KISS, as it's beyond doubt that Obstagoon was inspired by his stage persona the Demon, even if Game Freak hasn't officially acknowledged it. Google Lens Easter Egg I couldn't get it to work, as probably my phone is pretty bad, but if you use Google Lens on the box art of the games, a short trailer will display. The Lighthouse Protectors There's a lighthouse in Hullbury, and next to it there are two statues of Toxtricity. It is said that these were built to honor a time in which these two Pokémon successfully defended the lighthouse from something or somebody that is not really explained in the game. Shiny Antique Form Sinistee there are extremely rare shiny Pokémon in each game, such as those that need to be of a specific gender to evolve into a specific Pokémon, or to evolve at all, such as a female Salandid that can evolve into a Salazzle. This actually happened to me the very day I uploaded my Sun and Moon Iceberg in Pokémon Violet, a full odds female shiny Salandid with a timid nature. There's a 1 in 4096 chances to find a shiny Pokémon, 1 in 8 chances of finding a female Salandid, and 1 in 25 to find this Pokémon with a beneficial nature. If my calculations are correct, and please let me know in the comments if I'm right, the odds of finding the Pokémon I found is 1 in 819,200. If this is true, it's actually rarer than an antique form shiny Sinistee with a random nature. For this Pokémon, at least in Sword and Shield, it's 1 in 409,600. My Salandit is twice as rare, but if that Sinisty were to be of a specific beneficial nature, we would need to multiply that number by 25, which is the total of natures there are in the game. The chances of encountering a shiny antique form Sinisty with a timid nature is 1 in 10,240,000. If you want to talk about rare Pokémon, think about a shiny antique form Sinisty with a beneficial nature and perfect IVs in all its 6 stats and the odds are 1 in 10 quadrillion, 995 trillion, 116 billion, 277 million, 76,000. This is the equivalent of winning the Powerball jackpot 342 million times. I'm telling you, odds in Pokémon are insane, and there are still people that don't believe me when I say that there are less atoms in the universe than the big numbers we can see in the games, such as when we talk about a horde of 5 shiny Spinda with perfect IVs, beneficial nature, hidden ability and identical spot pattern. A well-known estimation of the number of atoms in the universe in astrophysics is 10 to the power of 80. Dusk Ball in the Darkest Day as most of you know, the Dusk Ball is one of the best Pokeballs in the game, as it has a times 3 multiplier when catching Pokemon at night or in caves. Well, when Eternatus causes the darkest day, Dusk Balls will have a times 3 multiplier. This phenomenon also occurs in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, if you are on New Moon Island, but in this case because the game considers it a cave. Koparasha's Original Region we know that not all Pokémon belong to the region they are introduced in, an example being that of Executor. The same happens with Copper Russia, as its sword Pokédex entry states that they came over another region long ago. It's possible that in the future, we might see this Pokémon's original region, maybe based on India. Zashan is a girl. Save for a few Pokémon like the Laddie Duo, the vast majority of Legendary are genderless. Well, in the Pokémon Shield Pokédex, it mentions that some say that it's Samacenta's elder sister. It surprised me almost as the Pokédex entry for Kadabra from Fire Red, in which it says that a boy with extrasensory powers awoke in bed transformed into Kadabra. Bayleaf 
A Japanese fan shared a picture of her holding a bailiff, stating that she couldn't wait to see it in Sword and Shield. If Yunichi Masuda hadn't retweeted the post, it wouldn't have caused such a scandal, but he did. And for those who aren't familiar with the games, Bailiff was one of the many Pokemon that didn't make the final cut. This outraged many Pokemon fans, and some of them were willing to boycott the games. Despite the outrage and the many criticisms, Sword and Shield are the second best-selling Pokemon games of all time. Litwick Litwick shines a light that absorbs the life energy of people in Pokemon, which becomes the fuel that it burns. There's a poor girl in Sirchester that is found in her house staring at a couple of Litwick. If you talk to her, she'll say she feels so calm by looking at how their flames wave. It's not that she's calm, it's that her life force is being drained by these two Pokemon. Definitely a quite dark easter egg. Paula there's a small side quest to get a choice scarf if you talk to a little girl in Hammerlock. She will ask you to deliver an old letter to a man named Frank in Ballonlay City. Once you hand it, he'll say it's from Paula, a friend from when he was a child. He mentions he got in an argument with her because she was ill and she hadn't told him before. He asks the player how old Paula is doing. It's not necessary to explain what happened to old Paula who is only a kid. On top of this, if you go back to the spot where Paula was after delivering the letter, you'll find a Reaper Cloth. There aren't any visual cues that the object is there, and without the existence of the item finder, I don't know what the chances of finding this item are. Invisible Entity Talking about ghosts, there's another strange thing happening at Frank's house. If you go to the right, you'll find a little girl who we've talked to. She'll ask the player not to interrupt their conversation, meaning that she's talking to an invisible entity. Whether that entity is Paula or not, is anyone's guess. Unused music there exist a couple of tracks that went unused, and one of them is a variation of the gym leader theme, which I prefer over the one we ended up with. Here are some examples of unused music in Pokemon Sword and Shield.
Where's Victini, another mythical Pokemon? I haven't heard anything like this since the Mew Under the Truck rumor. Within the Code of the Crown Tundra DLC, there's data for an encounter with a level 70 Victini. This of course started a hunt for the Victory Pokemon, and people came up with methods to find this mythical creature. The mystery went so far that there was a bounty of $500 by Austin John Place for whoever found this elusive Pokemon. As of today, Victini is nowhere to be found, and some people have theorized that Game Freak did this just to trick data miners in an era when schoolyard rumors no longer exist and the internet spreads information instantly. Beta Elements there are several beta elements found in early builds of the game, such as storyboarded cutscenes showing the opening cutscene of Sword and Shield. The title screen shows Mega Rayquaza, and this is interesting, as Mega Evolutions aren't part of the Gen 8 mechanics, meaning that most probably they were considered to be included, but were scrapped in the end. This is footage of an early build of the game. The graphics almost look like they came from the Nintendo 64, and it shows that at some point, a 360 camera was meant to be implemented outside of the wild area. There's of course a lot more beta content, but I found this the most interesting. Beta Eternatus if you thought Beta Arceus was something special, let me introduce you to Beta Eternatus. For some strange reason, it resembles a fish. Considering its background, it's a beta Pokemon I'm glad we didn't have. I love Dynamax Pikachu's cry. It reflects the change in size and the massive power it now possesses. I can imagine Gigantamax Pikachu being able to crush windows and even concrete with a Godzilla-like cry that would bring Primal Kyogre to its knees if it had them. So this is it, the Pokemon Sword and Shield Iceberg. Recently I've hit 7000 subscribers and I want to thank each of you for being part of this community and I want to invite others to join. Your like is very important to me as it's a way for YouTube to recommend my videos to more people. We're about to complete a cycle with the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Iceberg next, so if you have any suggestions for the next iceberg, please leave them in the comment section and I'll make sure to mention you in the credits. Take care, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.